What do you believe? We all have beliefs, lots of them, and about lots of different things. Meaning that someone asked that question could give a multitude of answers. There are some rather odd answers that are given to the question by many skeptics and atheists, though. When reading through various groups dedicated to atheism and skepticism on Facebook, or the tweets of various skeptics and atheists, we can see some of those rather odd views. Claims such as that they do not hold beliefs or that belief is accepting things with no evidence, and other such claims. Or they will treat beliefs as if they are worthy only of disdain, or only for the weak-minded. However, most of these arguments and claims are based on a misunderstanding of what beliefs are. Which is what this video will be addressing. In this video, we will look at how belief is defined in philosophy and psychology, some of the common misunderstandings, the idea of social schema in psychology, why beliefs are not a bad thing in and of themselves, and why it is the quality of the belief that matters. As well as a few other pertinent things to the discussion, of course. As always, the best place to start with a discussion like this is with a definition. So, what is belief? One of the best places to start when trying to understand what a term means is with a dictionary. They are not the be-all, end-all when it comes to understanding what a term means, of course, but they do make an excellent starting point. We will begin first with how the word is generally used by people. The Cambridge Dictionary describes belief as the feeling of being certain that something exists or is true. The Collins Dictionary gives us a slightly more in-depth description. Here we can see that it carries several different ideas when spoken about by people. A belief is a principle, proposition, idea, etc. accepted as true, or an opinion or conviction, or religious faith or trust or confidence, as in a person's ability, probity, etc. There does seem to be some overlap. For example, an opinion or conviction is simply a stance based on some principle, proposition, idea, etc. that we accept as true. So while these are described slightly differently, they kind of both describe the same thing. There seems to be one common theme from both entries. A belief is basically our attitude towards some proposition, claim, or or idea, with that attitude being that the proposition claim or idea is true. This only speaks of how people in general use the term belief, rather than how it is used in a technical sense in something like psychology or philosophy. Which is where we'll focus next, beginning with how the term is used in philosophy. Let's first look at the entry for belief in a Dictionary of Philosophy 3rd edition from Simon Blackburn. As we can see from the first line in the entry, a belief is simply a proposition that an agent holds to be true. The discussion in philosophy is centered around the quality of that state of belief, something that we will come to later in the video. Let's take a look at the entry for belief in the Rutledge Encyclopedia of Philosophy next. With this one too, we can see that belief is defined as the acceptance or assent to the truth of a proposition, though this one adds statements or facts to that description, similar to the entry in the Collins Dictionary. While there are many other dictionaries and encyclopedia entries that could be added, we'll stick to these two for the sake of the length of the argument. If you'd like to check them out though, there is the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy and a Dictionary of Philosophy from Anthony Flute. Let's take a look at a couple of entries from psychology. First up is the entry in the Penguin Dictionary of Psychology. This entry states that in psychology, the term belief is generally used in the standard dictionary sense of the acceptance of some proposition, statement, or doctrine. And to end this section, let's take a look at the entry in Oxford Dictionary of Psychology. This entry too states that a belief is any proposition that is accepted as true, with this one adding details such as it being accepted on the basis of inconclusive evidence, being stronger than a baseless opinion, but not as strong as knowledge, with a more general description at the end. So, we have now looked at six different definitions of belief, from six different sources, coming from three different contexts. 
dictionaries are not the be-all end-all of how a word is used. They do not determine how we must use a word. What they describe is how words are generally used. In the case of technical dictionaries, they describe how the word is used in that technical setting. However, like I said earlier, dictionaries are great starting places for understanding how a word is used. What we have seen by looking at these definitions is that there is a common thread when it comes to defining what a belief is. That common thread is that a belief is simply the acceptance of a proposition as true. We haven't really looked at what a proposition is, but essentially a proposition is a declarative statement that is true that. It's a statement that describes some state of affairs that is either true or false. There is slightly more to it than that, of course, as can be seen by the definition on screen at the moment. This definition comes from Coleman's 2009 Oxford Dictionary of Psychology. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy is another great resource. If maybe in the future I'll do a deeper dive into propositions, but for now it's enough to know that a proposition is a declarative statement about some state of affairs that is either true or false. And a belief is when we hold the attitude or affirm that proposition as true. There are questions and ideas surrounding the quality of beliefs, something we'll look at later in the video. Before that though, let's take a look at some of the common misunderstandings that we see from atheists and skeptics on Twitter, Facebook, and other such spaces. The first and simplest misunderstanding that can be seen from many skeptics and atheists is the idea that they hold no beliefs, or they claim that they don't do belief. Take the tweet on screen for example. This is not representative of all atheists of course. There are plenty that are more than happy to admit that they hold beliefs. However, this idea from atheists and skeptics that either they do not do belief, or that atheists and skeptics in general do not do belief, is far more prevalent than it should be. So what's wrong with it? Well, as we saw in the previous section, a belief is simply a proposition that an agent accepts or affirms as true. They are a part of who we are, so long as we accept things as true about the world. Consider looking out your window and seeing that it is raining. If you accept that it is true that it is raining, then you believe that it is raining. Or imagine opening your fridge and seeing that you need to get more milk. You then decide to head up to the local shop to get some, thinking that the shop will have some in stock. That thinking the shop will have some means that you believe the shop will have milk. One could respond here that these things are examples of knowledge and not belief, and that knowledge is completely different to belief. What this ignores is that knowledge involves belief. Let's consider once again the idea of it raining outside. To know that it is raining outside, it must be true. After all, you cannot know it is raining outside if it is not true that it is raining outside. And as we've also seen previously, a belief is simply an idea or proposition that we accept is true. In order to know that it is raining outside, we must also accept the idea or proposition that it is raining outside outside, which means that there is a connection between belief and knowledge. Knowledge involves belief in that we must believe what we claim to know. To say something like, I don't believe it is raining outside, I know it is raining outside, is akin to saying, I don't accept that it is true that it is raining outside, but I accept that it is true that it is raining outside. Here is an example of Matt Dillahunty saying something similar. As we can see then, someone claiming that they don't do belief is clearly mistaken. In in a slightly ironic twist, a person that accepts as true that they don't do belief is actually holding a belief that they don't do belief. If anyone wants to investigate this more, I highly recommend looking into what is known as Moore's Paradox. For now though, let's move on to another claim, that the idea that truth does not need belief. And we can see a similar claim in the Facebook post on screen at the moment. Like we have already seen, a belief is simply the acceptance of an idea or proposition is true. Now, to give this the most charitable reading, we could say that what is meant here is that truth does not require belief in order to be the truth, which is something I'm sure we could all agree with. Belief is not a necessary component of a truth maker for a proposition or idea. However, truth does require belief in other regards. 
Earth. Consider the idea of the flat Earth and the overabundance of people promoting and believing the idea that it is flat. There are clearly two different viewpoints at play here. There is one side that accepts the truth and affirms it is true, and the other side which does not accept the truth and does not affirm it is true. The difference then is belief. So we can see here that there is a sense in which the truth does indeed require belief. Another way we can see that the truth needs belief is across a culture. Imagine a culture made up of people that believe the earth is flat. The idea that the earth is flat is the prevailing view, with a few people promoting the idea that the earth is actually a kind of globe. They have evidence that shows that the earth is a globe and goes against the more popular evidence that the earth is flat. This would mean that most of the culture was mistaken. Not only were they mistaken, but they refused to accept the truth. Can we say in this culture that the truth needs no believers? I mean, sure, we could say that, but if the truth is to be seen as the truth, then it most certainly requires belief. Not believing it does not stop it from being the truth, of course, but it won't be seen as the truth until it is believed. Which brings us to another saying along the same lines, the idea that science doesn't require belief. we should make sure that we give this argument the strongest and most charitable reading. This means reframing the argument as something like science doesn't require belief to work. Consider the idea of the culture that believes that the earth is flat. Now swap this out for something like vaccinations or evolution or any other scientific theory. This shouldn't be particularly difficult. While we might not have this as a culture-wide phenomenon, it most certainly does exist in subcultures. We have anti-vax cultures, and we have religious cultures that deny evolution. So this shows that there is an element of belief to science. The science may be true whether they believe it or not, but it still requires belief for it to become accepted. Even at the level of scientists, there still needs to be, and is, an element of belief. If belief is simply the acceptance of an idea or proposition as true, then whenever a scientist accepts their findings, then they believe their findings. And accepting their findings is a necessary element of science. If a scientist were to reject their findings, then they would not proceed in their investigation. Even if we find it hard to believe that a scientist would reject their findings, it still holds true. The idea that science does not need belief is born born of the idea that there is something inherently wrong with belief. We will leave that here for now though and pick it up later on in the video when we discuss the idea of the quality of beliefs. There are other common misunderstandings about belief and what it is that float around atheist and skeptic groups. However, most of them are based on the same kind of misunderstanding of what a belief is that the preceding examples show. So what has been said here can be extrapolated into a response for those other misunderstandings. As stated, we'll cover off the idea that there is something inherently wrong with belief in and of itself later. So for now, let's move the conversation along. So, as we've seen, beliefs are just something that we all hold. Like I mentioned, what is important is the quality of the belief. What is meant when we say the quality of belief? Well, the quality of being rational, and the quality of being true, and the quality of justification. Of course, not all beliefs are rational, true, or justified. Some are clearly irrational, false, and unjustified. And we'll explore these qualities in more detail later, but there is something to consider first. How we come to believe things. This one seems kind of obvious. We come to believe things in many different ways. Through experiences, and through discussions, and through learning, and through our environments, and many other ways. We may see dark clouds approaching, and this leads us to believe that rain is coming later. If we stop to consider all the ways we come to accept things as true, we see all all the various ways we come to these beliefs. However, rather than cover all those, 
shows, we will focus on how atheists and skeptics might come to beliefs like the misconceptions mentioned previously. While many atheists like to quip that organizing atheists is the equivalent of herding cats, there are lots of examples where it's not quite the case. Consider the many atheist content creators on YouTube and places like Twitter and Facebook. Also, consider the many groups on Facebook where atheists and skeptics congregate. Groups where atheism and theism are debated and discussed. Wherever we see a theist post, we are bound to find at least a handful of atheists demanding that they prove their god, or arguing against what they say. Going back to the idea of YouTube content creators, we can also see names like Matt Dillahunty, Aron Ra, Ricky Gervais, Skeptic Generation, T. John and many others, who are popular and whose arguments and ideas influence atheists and skeptics. It's from places like this that many get their beliefs about skepticism and atheism, and even their beliefs about beliefs, especially those coming out of religion and diving headlong into atheism and skepticism. These are the places that many first come across arguments like atheists do not do beliefs, and belief and knowledge are two different things, along with many other faulty arguments too. They see these arguments confidently asserted by others. These arguments also receive lots of likes and lots of support from others. The atheist and skeptic will then go on to adopt these beliefs themselves, assuming it to be true and without any question, with that cycle repeating again and again, and these faulty beliefs becoming more and more legitimized. If we look at these sources, these groups, and these authorities, we can see where many get their beliefs. We can often see the same or similar catchphrases, arguments, and beliefs spread through other groups unquestioningly and in an unquestionable manner. To end this section, I just want to suggest that those people that use arguments like those mentioned previously in the video pause for a moment to think about where they learn these ideas. Where did you get the ideas from and why did you accept them? I have an article on the Answers and Reason website about why breaking down our beliefs is important. I'll link to them in the description for anyone interested in deconstructing their ideas a little more. For now though, let's move on to the idea of schematic processing. In psychology, schema refer to a cognitive structure that contains information that relates to a particular kind of object. While the term object might bring up visions of a physical object, here the term is used in a much looser way. The kind of schema that we will be discussing in this section play a part in our perceptions. We can trace the idea of schema back to Frederick Bartlett, a British psychologist, who discussed them as part of his theory of learning. The term schema was introduced and popularized in the work of Jean Piaget, a Swiss psychologist. As stated, schema refer to a cognitive structure that contains information that relates to a particular kind of object. By cognitive structure, we're referring to a particular way that information is organized, stored, accessed, and used in our memories. These schema come in several kinds, such as person schema, role schema, self schema, object schema, and event schema. If we look at what some of these schema represent, we will begin to see their connection to belief. A person schema contains information that focuses on specific individuals. It contains information like how they look, their favorite films and food, and that kind of thing. Consider event schema to be sort of like scripts that describe how we ought to act in various situations. So we have an event schema for going to work, how we behave when we are in a restaurant, and that kind of thing. We would also contain event schema for how to respond when we meet a theist, how we respond when asked what an atheist is, how we respond when we come across information that runs counter to what we think we know, and when asked other things relating to our atheism and skepticism. Self schema is the information that we hold about ourselves and things that we think we know about ourselves, and this can include information about how we see our idealized selves, so things we wish were true of ourselves also, and things we think true of ourselves but are not quite true. We can see the kind of things that schema describe. They describe things we think are true about people, places, events, objects, and ourselves. Schema are the beliefs that make up our worldview. These beliefs are all interconnected and influence each other and influence our perceptions of the world. To say that we do not hold beliefs is to say that we do not have schema, which is an integral part of how we form our perceptions of the world and how we process the world. Of 
course, what we say here is information about the world, but these still match the conditions of being beliefs. Some of these beliefs are deeply entrenched, and those entrenched beliefs are supported by beliefs that are even more deeply entrenched. Our perceptions are built in a top-down manner. We see our friend John in front of us first, then his likes, his, his dispositions, and then deeper down find explanations for why we believe those things about John. Philosopher W.V.O. Quine gives us a good analogy here in what he called the web of beliefs. If we imagine all of our beliefs as being connected to each other, through a giant and intricate web. This web connects all of our beliefs through various ideas, information, and justifications. When we look out and we see a tree and perceive it as a tree, there become justifications for why we call it a tree that are linked to beliefs about language. This kind of example also shows how information and belief play an important part in schematic processing. Imagine now that you are perceiving a tree. You know it is a tree based on various characteristics and based on various beliefs and justifications. You have also learned a lot of types of trees, so you can perceive what certain kinds of trees are. However, you have never learned what the species of tree in front of you is. You could still perceive certain elements of the tree. The actual kind of tree will always be beyond us though, at least until we fill in that object schema. And that object schema becomes linked to the tree object schema. And that gets indexed with all of our other beliefs. And it also becomes part of our recall too. As anyone with a less than perfect memory like me knows, in this we practice recall, these things can quite easily slip away. The object schema becomes harder and harder to recall unless we begin to familiarize ourselves with it again. Think now of how many levels deep and how many web connected nodes there are to our beliefs. Imagine how easy it would be for some of these lower level beliefs to be justifying a lot of other beliefs in some ways. Ways that make it foundational and foundational to how we see ourselves and how we see others and how strongly we hold certain ideas. We can see just how easy it is for our beliefs to become deeply entrenched and hard to change. The deeper it is, the harder it becomes to change as too many other beliefs rely on it and some of them very important beliefs. The idea of entrenched beliefs that are used to process our perceptions of the world as well as our perceptions of ourselves seems even more important when we consider that we are guided by these beliefs. Consider the idea of the event schema mentioned previously. These beliefs guide how we behave in various situations, and these can be informed by other event schema and other object and people schema. The vastness of the connections in these beliefs makes clear how important these beliefs are when it comes to being guided by them. Imagine a web where lots of these belief-related schemata are false or poorly formed, and they are grounded by other false and poorly formed beliefs. Also, imagine a person whose self schema are that they are good skeptics and whose object schema about skepticism include the idea that a good skeptic doesn't hold beliefs. The object schema guides how they see themselves as skeptics and causes them to defend a false position in order to hold on to the identity of a skeptic. The event schema becomes important here also because if the atheist or skeptic's event schema point to a disposition of protecting the identity over an event schema of good skepticism, then the faulty belief matters more than the good skepticism. This holds true of atheists, skeptics, theists, and any other label we care to apply to someone. Faulty beliefs are easy to acquire and harder to shake, simply because of how intricate our web of beliefs is and how interconnected all of our schematic can be. This is why it is important to acquire correct beliefs deep down in our web of beliefs. Starting from strong foundations and ensuring our event schema are are all guided by the best principles and true beliefs, and making sure that our critical thinking and skepticism related schemata are dispositional is important. Accepting that we have beliefs is not counter to this. Admitting that beliefs permeate our perceptions means we can work on making sure that we have the highest quality of beliefs in the greatest quantity. Of course, for those coming out of religion, the idea of belief will leave something of a sour taste in the mouth. This is completely understandable. Many will have been living their lives according to a belief, and a pretty foundational belief that they have now come to accept is incorrect. 
fact. Belief will then be something worthy only of disdain, and more reliable methods of knowledge gathering and belief formation will be sought out. Which is why the skeptic community is so enticing for those leaving faith. It aims towards fulfilling that very aim. Beliefs really are not a bad thing in and of themselves though. As has been shown, beliefs are simply ideas, propositions, and opinions we hold as true. We also saw that our perceptions are made up of beliefs, and an intricate web of beliefs where all of our beliefs are interconnected in various ways, as well as how beliefs play a part in schematic processing and how our brains process information about the world around us, from our friends to how we process events and more. As skeptics, we should not be arguing that we hold no beliefs. This seems to deny the very reality in front of us. The evidence is overwhelming for the idea that we all hold beliefs of some sort to some degree. There is most certainly enough evidence to discount the idea that the statement, I hold no beliefs. However, here is where all other skeptics should be arguing against this idea too, rather than adopting it. This is an opportunity to teach the importance of skepticism and the importance of critical thinking. It is the opportunity to teach the idea that it is not having beliefs that is a problem. It is the quality of the belief. Not only does agreeing or reinforcing the idea that skeptics or atheists have no beliefs teach something that is incorrect, but it also goes against good critical thinking and skepticism. We waste an opportunity to teach about good epistemology, good logic, good reasoning, the burden of proof, justification, and lots more. In effect, we should understand why those leaving faith would want to distance themselves from the idea of belief. However, it should be seen as an opportunity to help them deconstruct and then reconstruct through newer and better habits. One of those newer and better habits should involve an understanding of the quality of beliefs. As we saw throughout the video, it is impossible to avoid belief in some form or another. Our perceptions of the world are built from a connected web of schemata and belief. These go all the way down to a foundational level. We also saw that belief and knowledge are not two entirely different things, as some skeptics and atheists argue. For us to be considered to know some proposition, we must also believe that proposition. It could be argued here, then, that knowledge is a belief of a particular quality. An item of knowledge, at least in the sense of knowledge of, is generally considered to be a well-justified belief. A common theory of knowledge is known as the JTB theory of knowledge, with JTB standing for justified true belief. While the JTB theory of knowledge has fallen out of favor in modern times thanks to the works of Edmund Gettier, the theory is not completely useless. It has not fallen out of favor because those three properties are not necessary for knowledge, but because Gettier showed that all three together are not sufficient for knowledge. The theory is also still useful for understanding the kind of qualities we should desire our beliefs to have. We should desire our beliefs to be both true and justified. While they might not guarantee that we have knowledge, they are still qualities that we should aim for. Even if we are just holding opinions, our beliefs being true and justified means that they are not just mere opinion. They would be well-grounded opinions and more easily defended opinions. This does not mean that we should not aim for as much knowledge as possible. However, having well-justified and true beliefs is something we should be doing our best to aim for. But what does it mean to have well-justified beliefs and opinions? Well, that's kind of a big topic, and one with a lot of arguments, ideas, and literature surrounding it. For the average plod like us, though, we can make sure we do our homework when it comes to adopting new beliefs. One simple question to help with justification is have we simply picked up a popular idea or have we actually looked into the idea? Take the idea that caused this video. There are many that have adopted the stance that atheists do not do belief and there are individuals that believe that they hold no belief. In this case, they have simply picked up a popular idea without actually looking into it. The belief also isn't true, so it would seem in this case that this belief would not be justified. As it is false, that two counts against the quality of the belief. It could be argued here that they picked up the information from an unreliable source too, which is another thing that should be thought
thought of when it comes to the quality of our beliefs. Where have we picked up the information from? This question can also help with the question we just asked. Did we pick up the information from people that could be considered an authority on the topic? And by authority here, we mean someone who has actually looked into the topic or studied the topic or is qualified in the topic or is at least educated in the topic. Are the people we have gotten the information from epistemically responsible? In the future, I'll create a video that focuses on justifications for beliefs. For now though, simply thinking your justifications through is a great start, especially when our beliefs are challenged. Do our justifications hold up to the challenge? A good test that can be recommended here is to imagine whether we would accept our justifications if they came from another person. Imagine as an atheist that it was a theist giving us those same justifications. Would we reject those justifications if they came from a theist? And if we would, then can we really say that our own beliefs are justified? Like I said earlier in the video, I have an article online that discusses deconstructing our beliefs, and there's also a video on the Answers and Reason channel that kind of discusses the same thing. So there'll be links in the description if you want to look further into it. I've rambled on for quite a while now, so let's wrap things up. The video began by explaining how beliefs are defined. They are simply ideas, opinions, propositions, and information that we hold to be true. There is nothing unjustified, irrational, or illogical about holding beliefs in and of itself. Holding beliefs does not make us a bad skeptic or a bad atheist. Later in the video, we also looked at the idea of the quality of our beliefs. It is the quality of our beliefs that makes us illogical logical, irrational, or unjustified. This is also where being a bad skeptic can come into play. We also saw earlier in the video a direct quote from Matt Dillhunty on Twitter where he discusses belief being a necessary component of knowledge. So we can see that there are many skeptics that accept the idea of holding beliefs and understand their necessity. We can also see that they understand that it is the quality of the belief that matters. The way our perceptions are formed through schematic processing, some Something we also looked at in the video shows us why making sure that we hold the best quality beliefs possible is important. If we consider our beliefs as an intricate and interconnected web, as per Quine's web of beliefs, we can see how bad quality beliefs can affect a lot of other beliefs. When discussing schematic processing, we also looked at the idea of event schema and self schema. Something that we discussed was how self schema, or the ideas that we hold about ourselves, do not necessarily lead to changes in our event schema, with event schema being scripts that we run when we encounter certain situations. Simply labeling ourselves a skeptic does not necessarily lead to skepticism becoming a disposition. It does not necessarily lead to our event schema causing us to behave like skeptics. This is something that takes work and needs us to update various schemata that we hold and to make those schemata become standard operating procedure. Which is why I argue that faulty claims about atheists and belief ought to be challenged by other skeptics and atheists. As stated, this idea can lead to bad critical thinking and behavior that is antithetical to good skepticism. Like I also mentioned earlier in the video, it is understandable that people coming out of religion might want to avoid the idea of belief. These people should be given time to process and deconstruct. However, we should not be normalizing the idea that atheists and skeptics hold no beliefs, or that belief in and of itself is something skeptics should avoid. We should be helping people leaving religion to deconstruct, but we should also be helping them to re construct. There is an opportunity to help them become the critical thinking skeptics that they desire to become. And it is often missed because many skeptics and atheists are more concerned with portraying a particular image of the skeptic than the skepticism itself. So if you're a skeptic slash atheist who sees other skeptics and atheists making these kind of arguments, then please try to challenge them. Doing so helps improve their skepticism and critical thinking, something we as skeptics and atheists are always arguing is important. I'll wrap it up here though. Hopefully there has been some food for thought, and hopefully I'll see you out there challenging the many faulty arguments made by atheists and skeptics too. Hope your day goes well, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye.